Hi, I'm Greg Lefebvre, and this is The Compulsive Storyteller, a series of short personal stories that prove the adage that truth can be stranger than fiction. This week's episode is the last of a four-part series about cops, specifically my altercations with bad cops, corrupt cops, and dumb cops over the years. Part four is called Tactical Patrol Force, where I get abused by a New York City Police Department task force taking down a seemingly innocent man. As mentioned in the intro to a Bad Cop episode from last season, after the police killed George Floyd, I made a list of all the times I've had difficulty with the police. I came up with 36 different instances, and I recount another one here as a cautionary tale. Had I been a black or brown man, any one of these 36 run-ins could have been fatal for me. Bad Cop, Bad Cop, Tactical Patrol Force. It is late spring of 2010, and I take a female friend to a black tie opening at MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York. We're both dressed formally, and after the opening, it's such a lovely night, we decide to walk cross town to the Hudson River and then downtown on the pedestrian river walk to her Chelsea studio. Because it's the first warm spring night, the path is crowded with all sorts of people, rollerbladers, bicyclists, speed walkers, jugglers, Hare Krishna people, and the whole panoply of New York characters. As we move along with the flow of the crowd, directly in front of us is a Rasta guy with his dreads balled up in a colorful sack cap, knitted with the colors of the Jamaican flag. Just in front of him, standing facing the flow of the crowd, is a member of Jews for Jesus, passing out leaflets. He passes a leaflet to the Rasta guy, who then turns with a big smile and passes it back to me. It doesn't seem like a hostile gesture, so I take it, and my friend, who is Jewish, actually wants to read it. Just at that instant, a group of four beefy guys, all dressed in T-shirts, jeans, and sneakers, roughly brushes past us on either side, grab the Rasta guy, and slam him to the ground. One actually stands on his neck, while another squats to restrain his arms, and the other two rip him apart, tearing off his hat, rifling through his pockets and bag. He doesn't struggle, but just lays there. My guess is that this is not the first time this has happened to him, and he knows the drill. I can't help myself and start to say, Hey, come on, what? The cop standing on his neck yells in my face, Move along! I continue, What has he done to deserve? At which point he punches me in the stomach, which doubles me over in pain. As I struggle to gain my breath and respond, my friend grabs my arm and screams hysterically, Come on, Greg, let's go! When I resist, she starts to cry, Please take me home! I look at all four of the men to take a mental picture, all plain clothes, so no one is wearing any sort of identification, and they have on street clothes, and they're all overweight. As we walk along, and she pulls herself together, my breathing returns to normal. I tell her, that was Giuliani's tactical patrol force, the TPF. I give her a capsule description of the misdeeds of the tactical patrol force, part of Giuliani's law and order campaign set up by his chief of police, William Bratton. They're a group of New York City police patrols that operate out of different police stations throughout the city under Bratton's command. The patrols stop and frisk anyone they choose to search, most often targeting minorities and young people. One of their most egregious violations of people's civil rights is their program of filming undercover videos of black and brown kids hanging around street corners in the hood. Then, when someone is mugged in Midtown, like a white tourist from Kansas. The victims are shown selections of videos that roughly fit the description of the perp. Next, and this is the evil part, the kid the victims supposedly identify from the videos, who may live in the far reaches of the Bronx, is picked up and put in a lineup. The victims, of course, pick the kid out because they've just seen him in a video. The TPF has put many such kids in jail, a total tragedy. The next day, I call the Midtown North Precinct, which has jurisdiction over the part of the river walk we were on. Midtown North Precinct, Dust Sergeant speaking. 
Can I speak to somebody about the tactical patrol unit stationed there? Sorry, we can't talk about the TPF. Well, do they work out of there? Again, I can't disclose that. Can I speak to the highest-ranking officer on hand about the TPF assaulting someone along the Hudson River bike path in your precinct last night? He's not here. Do you know when he'll be in? No idea. Can I come in and wait for him? Sure, but it might be a long wait, like maybe forever. You should call 311 hotline and register the complaint. After leaving multiple messages at the station and on the hotline, I never receive a call back, and I finally give up. A few years later, I'm very pleased to read about the Tactical Patrol Force's disbandment due to their racial profiling, witness intimidation, and excessive force. But the problem is that all those TPF cops go right back into the rank and file, and I'm sure they take their racist and violent behavior with them. It's almost impossible to reform the police in this way. What have I learned from the whole affair? When cops are corrupt and well-funded, they can brutalize anyone for any reason. Stepping back and recording at a distance is definitely safer. But as we've all seen too often, even then, there are no guarantees. The Compulsive Storyteller is written and narrated by me, Greg Lefebvre, and co-produced with Peter Kokoma, who's also made our theme song. If you enjoyed this week's episode, we'd love your help sharing the show. Please subscribe to The Compulsive Storyteller for free on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And also, if you could leave a review, that would be fantastic. Follow the show on Instagram, at The Compulsive Storyteller, and check out our website for more information at thecompulsivestoryteller.com. Thanks for listening, and if you don't like this one, the next one will be another story. Mm-hmm.